Hi, Aries. How are you guys? Let's do your reading. So just in the pre-shuffle, we have this card came out more than once. Come to the edge. That's kind of like, we might read that at the end, but it's like, take, you know, jumping off the cliff. It could be kind of a tower. I feel like it's a good tower, though. And this flexible card, um, it's kind of what's coming. What I'm getting on this is obviously don't be rigid, um, but it's like a reminder to ebb and flow, you know, like trees are grounded and the roots are grounded. So when a storm comes, they are able to sway. They're not rigid. It's like when you talk about metals, platinum is the strongest metal, but it's the softest metal. What does that mean? It's, you know, it's, it's, um, what's the word? Um, soluble or, um, <laughs> malleable, <laughs> like it dents easy, right? But it's stronger. It's not brittle. It doesn't break as easy, right? It's that kind of energy. So see, and this is interesting because this is, it looks like an egg. And so eggs are fragile, but this is something deep here what is this and it's got something deep but it, I feel like this is um not to be like so set in your ways or or rigid um be able to go with the flow like let okay, um <laughs> sorry guys um um help me out hold on It's equanimity is, is the word, so was, which is, you know, you are grounded and stable so that when things come to your mind, you observe them without judgment and let them pass. So same thing with obstacles and issues in life. You observe them without judgment and handle what you need to and let them pass. You don't hang on to it, okay, or let it stop you, something like that. We have strong magician energy here. Let's just see if anything else comes out. So how are you? This is for Aries, Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. It's a general reading, of course. Cannot, will not resonate for everyone. Please don't force it. Please make sure you guys are getting sunshine every day. Every day. Every single day, if you can. Preferably not through a window. Only through a window if that's your only option. Um, music. Dance. Nature. Hmm. A leg up. Oh, also, nines and tens are, are strong, coming through kind of strong. Interesting. By the book. Okay. Anything else from this deck for Aries? And then we will lay out a spread. Oh, my goodness. That... That came out more than once before I turned on the camera and I didn't take it, but it's not letting me not, so no place like home. This may be a good time to tie up loose ends, projects at your house. I feel like Aries is coming, I feel like I had this reading just like three years ago. I feel like Aries is coming out of a sluggish energy and getting back on top embracing coming like back to yourself um there it is the magician i felt though and i just said sunshine okay we're gonna get it's time to it's time to lay out a spread because of these cards are set, or these cards are coming out things that i just said just said magician and i said get sunshine all right um this kind of feels like a longing for like a homesick type feel the Seven of Pentacles is typically it's waiting. I feel like you guys are starting to feel back to yourself, back to your old self, coming back into your power. Soulmate energy. Hmm. All right. Be flexible. This could mean step out of your box type energy. A lot of healing. Oh, 
you know what? Maybe you guys have been through a year of healing and dealing with, you know, wounds and upsets, and you're coming out of that. Okay. Hey, Aries energy. Hermit. So the hermit is somebody who, you know, shuts out the noise, seeks enlightenment. It's a major glow up. And then look at that, the nine, two nines. And didn't I tell you guys I was feeling nines and tens? So look, we got two nines here. Um, oh my gosh, nine and nine together is 18, which breaks down to a nine. Wow, okay, you guys watch for nines. Nines is almost there. Nines is not an ending. It's almost to a cycle completion. I feel like you're getting close to something. You're coming into your back into your power after a feeling of disempowerment. This is your disempowerment. This is, um, sh again, it's like shutting out the noise. Okay, you've been working hard on this something. King of Swords. Detaching from something, it looks like you have some information coming to you. Maybe a an opportunity could be an apology. This has been a lot of hard. Look at that. Look where my finger is. Split the deck, not even meaning to. Manifestation. And look. Infinity. Eights. The letter B. Okay, so back to where we were. Progress, turning your back, you're detaching from something that you've been trying to detach from for a while. Could be an energy. Doesn't have to actually be a person. Okay, so the lover's card. No, we need to zoom out a bit, don't we? The lover's, that's a decision, Gemini energy. Wealth, independence. Interesting. Tara's advice, if you choose to take it, six of swords. I'm going to get into more of this here in a minute. You're, you're cutting it off. You're not giving as much. Maybe to a Capricorn, something that was draining, something toxic, some sort of toxic tie possibly, um, a feeling of obsession, but I don't think, I, I want to say clearly, very strong, I feel it's not your fault. This may be a, um, some sort of attachment from a, a previous wound, but you're disattaching from it, and you're going to take any blows that come toward you, it, they're going to, you're going to be able to handle them better. It's not going to be, okay, let's talk about the pillars. You got these, you got to have these pillars in, in place to have a strong foundation. They're, it's like work, right? Uh, your love life, your professional life or finance, your health. Um, and we want to make sure we add community to that pillar. So you've got to have a community pillar, okay? You want to feed and keep stable and strong all these pillars. If you put all your energy into one pillar, love, and that one cracks or breaks down, then you only have that one pillar holding you up. You know what I'm saying? So you got to keep these other pillars, put energy into all, all the different er, pillars of your, of your life, not just one. If you lose your job, you have family and community to lean on. You have your other things keeping you happy. You have your health, you, you know, workouts, you have other things. So it's not just everything. All your energy cannot go into one pillar and then expect, and then you expect to be okay when that one pillar breaks, right? Or gets a chip or something. You have to have the stability elsewhere. Wow. Yeah. This is, I mean, what, I think what's happening, it could be astrological, but Aries, you're coming back into your power after a while of feeling disempowered. Back to your old self. You could have been dealing with somebody toxic or a toxic connection, obsession. Maybe they were not able to let you go, but this emperor, that's you, all you, strong, stable. Somebody that sits in their power and it looks like it's totally your, part of your destiny. Um, what was I going to ask? Why do we need the lover's card? 
you're choosing you. It does look like you might get a, um, wow, some sort of new beginning. The full card. And interesting, come to the edge. This is Ace of Pentacles. It's a stable new beginning. Something where you free yourself of other things. Tell me more about the Ace of Pentacles. Three Cups. Friendships. Celebration. I think people in your world are going to be happy once you free yourself of something. Your friends, family maybe. There's the Seven of Pentacles again. You're just catching your footing. What's coming for love, in love for Aries? What's coming next? I got to tell you, Aries, once you figure out what your value is and you stop entertaining less than, it does get a little more challenging to, like, it's good and it, it's got its caveat because you you don't put up with and you recognize toxic behavior or insincerity really fast, but that also li limits who you're going to spend your time with. So you go through this period where you're kind of like, geez, nobody, you know, it's hard to find somebody on your level, but the good news is you're just weeding people out faster. Okay. Let's see, you this not eight of um, swords. Hmm. Eight of swords, three of pentacles, three of pentacles is partnerships, collaboration. You're just here. You pick here, and that's okay. Because otherwise, what's the other option? The other it might feel like no, there's not that many people, as many people on your level, but there are. There are hundreds. You're just gonna um, weed out a bunch of a bunch more people and reach your end goal faster. Why do we have this eight of swords? Some of you might be struggling with the mother energy. Eight of Swords. This is not, this is some, this is feeling like you're trapped and stuck, but you're not. Two of Cups at the bottom of the deck. What, one more on that, and then I'm going to grab an Oracle. Wow, look at that. So painful ending, but it's a growth. It's very growth oriented. Look, recognition. Aries, you're just not letting any of this bad. Let, you're just coming back into your power after a uh, after a period of being in a funk. You're getting back to you. You're becoming you again. I want to see the man on the chair. Aries is going to be more on top of what controls Aries, what influences Aries. Work through your fears. New moon in Scorpio. There's that climax I was feeling. Look at that new moon, full moon in Aries, and fiery climax approaches. Your hard work is paying off. I'm going to read one of these. Work through your fears. New moon in Scorpio. Oh, my finger went right there. This card suggests a rebirth. Think of your situation as the phoenix that's rising from the ashes as birth, death, rebirth paradigm. That's what Scorpio energy is about. Whatever you've been through, there's a new start ahead. It might be a little dark. This is exactly what we were getting. It almost certainly won't be rainbows and unicorns, but it will be deep and transforming. This card also suggests that if you know you're magical, we had the magician, more than once. If you know you're magical, this is time to work your magic. It can also herald the start of a sexier time. 
If you've been experiencing something of a drought and emotional intimacy is also on the menu. Wow. Okay, good. So you got love coming. Scorpio is the sign that likes to go deep into the body, mind, and spirit. So when this card comes up, there's something, there's nothing superficial about what's coming your way. <laughs> it says, have some sexy time. Time to let go of your grudge. Any grudge you're holding, move away from jealousy. Not Stop being obsessive. Wow. Um, be careful not to be paranoid. It says, could it be you're being paranoid and make an investment? So Scorpio is a sign of death and rebirth, magic and shamans. It's the energy. Its energy is a little dark, occult, even scary. Not all of us like to face the shadow, but Scorpio demands it. In fact, it's through working through your dark side that you can get to the light. And now in the new moon in Scorpio, and the appearance of this card at any other time suggests you need to do that now. That's amazing. And hard work is paying off. You guys have been going through some shadow work is what I think. That's true for me. This is interesting too, because it says fire climax and the, this is saying sexy time. <laughs> ha ha. All right, you guys, let's talk in the comments. I love you so much. Um, this is going to be your, your funk and dark. Here's another thing. I want to say this. If you are working on shadow work and going through some deep trauma healing, okay, like I have this past year, first of all, thank you for staying with me. It has not been an easy year for me. I think my ratings have been all over the place um, because I have been, you know. But um, you don't take it all on in one lump you know, one clump, like let yourself, you got to give yourself breaks from it. Give yourself breaks from dealing with the healing, you know, um, get your mind off it. Don't watch that kind of stuff. Don't read that kind of stuff. You got to take breaks. You could take it in small pieces. If you take it too much, you're going to over, you could overwhelm your central nervous system. All right. So anyway, yeah, it looks like you have love coming. Let's pull a love card real quick. I say love card. What is a love card? Let's pull a card on specifically. About love. And let's pull it on money too. Okay. I'm going to use a specific deck for money. Wow, I just saw the Hierophant and the Justice card. That would indicate something big time. Okay. Thank you. Princess of Cups. So it looks like you're going to get, you know, some, some new flirtation going on. Oh, wow, there's Prince and Princess of Cups. It's going to, looks like it's going to be pretty innocent to start. But this is like flirty communication. to no money. Hmm. That's hard work. Focused attention paying off. One more for money. Okay, so something, this justice card, it kind of hasn't been wanting to leave me alone. Something um, is going to balance out. So look, with I've obviously with your finances those may have taken a bit of a hit too anything else for money forward motion that's all very very good but i was feeling that let's see let's do one tell me a little bit about love for aries what's coming i don't think you're supposed to get off track though it could be an air sign I don't know. I mean, that's feeling like detachment. This is feeling like no longer giving to something that's not reciprocal. It feels like that seems like that's what's trying to come through. Oh my. The Empress, Two of Cups. Yeah, equal, give and take. But taking it slow and stable. 
could be an apology. I just don't think you're supposed to get, let anything go with the, a person that hasn't been going well derail you from your from your finances and your purpose right now. But this is self-love, self-care, two of cups, two people who give equally slow. Looks like it's going to be something that's very communicated. Stability is going to be communicated for you. I keep saying I'm going to stop, but then I keep going. So. Oh, no mas, please. One more for Aries. Growth. What's going on for Aries in growth? I commit to the practice of seeing the good in all things. So even, even things that have been painful lessons, we can give thanks for the, we can give thanks for the lesson in it and the growth. And that's not easy to do, I know. Oh my gosh, and I just said, don't let go of your purpose. I know what I'm here to do. This is all about purpose. So whatever you're moving away from, I think this might be a little bit of a reminder to do it with love. Let me read this purpose card real quick. Because it's vibing. You have chosen to reincarnate on earth for one major goal to express love and... Oh, no way. Oh, no way. We got the love card and the purpose card. I'm reading the purpose card and it says to express love in all that you do. Did I not just say that? This is crazy. Okay, the obstacles of this physical dimension can distract you. I just said that. I'm telling you guys, it freaks me out sometimes. I don't think love is supposed to distract you from your purpose. I think I just literally said that verbatim. The obstacles of this physical dimension I'm going to let you guys see this. Can distract you from that goal, and it's easy to lose your way. Life on earth is full of obligations that require your conscious attention, but that does not, doesn't mean you can't infuse all your decisions with caring and compassion. Your purpose in life is not your career. Rather, your career is guided by your purpose. I have butterflies. What activities speak to your soul? What brings you joy? That is the direction your soul is calling you. My light just went out. Did y'all see that? I'm telling you guys something strong happening, kind of freaky. <sighs> okay. I know I'm such a drama queen. I'm sorry. That is the direction your soul is calling you toward to best convey your own unique expression of love and make a contribution to the world. If you're not happy with your current circumstances, then it's your soul telling you there is a better way to manifest your own distinct gifts. Listen to your intuition. It is your connection to spirit and the voice of your soul. Blown away. Literally blown away right now by this. I want you guys to have you able to freeze and read it. Okay. Well, I, I mean, I, I'm going to listen. I usually forget readings right afterwards. I'm going to watch this and listen to it. This is speaking so loudly to me and so powerfully. I literally didn't want to ask too much more about love because I didn't want it to take away from the, your, you know, your, I didn't want it to derail you from the readings message, which I felt like was big time about you achieving goals. And the very second word, you have to, you've chosen to reincarnate for one major goal to express love in all that you do. I swear, I, like, I'm blown away, you guys. I love you so much. Thank you for your beautiful energy. Um, let's talk in the comments, okay? Wow, love you.